Hello, Bible readers. It is Wednesday, January 20th. We are reading Psalms 72 and 119, and then John, we're in chapter 13, verses 1 through 30. Uh, John chapters 13 through 17 are known as the last discourse, which really is, is not just one last teaching, but it's a series of sayings and teachings um, probably a lot of uh, a lot of things that the the Johannine or the the John community um, would have been familiar with things that Jesus was known to have said and just kind of all get piled into this these chapters of John. What we're reading for today, chapter thirteen, verses one to thirty. Some people would say you should include verses thirty one to thirty eight in this little segment. Um, but this is a transition into this last discourse series of chapters. Uh, it starts with chapter 13, verse 1, really sets up the rest of the story as we hear, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. It's kind of an introduction to, and now we're about to sneak up on the end of this story. Um, what does that love look like? is what we're going to read about today. You know, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Well, that love looks like foot washing. Uh, that love looks like, uh, eventually we'll know that it looks like dying for everyone. Uh, this text, though, you know, the death of Jesus is going to make sense of everything. Just like in the Gospel of Mark, um, it's, a, you know, Mark was working toward the end with the empty tomb, like, oh, now I get the whole gospel. The disciples in John's gospel have a kind of a similar experience. Because as a reader, you you know where this is going, um, probably. You, you've probably been, uh, you've probably encountered the story of Jesus somewhere else. But uh, for the characters in John's gospel, the death of Jesus will be what opens their eyes and, and informs their ignorance. Um, this text we have today, chapter 13, verses 1 to 30, extends this theme of ignorance versus knowing. We see how Peter doesn't understand what the foot washing is for or what Jesus is trying to communicate through it. And yet, Peter will come to understand. He'll grow in understanding. Um we can't know God's love without Jesus' death, but we get a couple more big hints at God's willingness to sacrifice and grace God's people. And so the, the foot washing, I said, that's that shows a limitless love that, that God would be willing to wash feet. Peter is resistant. Um, and so really that's so it's an extension of the theme we've of themes we've seen up to now. Uh, ignorance versus knowing, but then it's also an opening up to this last discourse where knowing then will move us to do. You know, if you know, then you'll do. Um, that's a big connection. I was going to read just a little portion here. Um, Jesus knows that a change of heart will transform Peter's present ignorance into understanding. And Jesus has knowingly chosen fragile, failing disciples, but he sends them out anyway as his representatives. Uh, he even knows that one of them will strike out against him. God is revealed in a love that surpasses all imaginable ways of loving. And maybe that's a theme here in this part of John, especially that we should remember that God loves in a way that we, we don't really get. Why would he choose these kinds of disciples? Um, okay, the Psalms 72, Psalm 72, very appropriate for today. On this day of inauguration, it is a prayer for a king. I'm not saying our president is meant to be a king, but it's a prayer written for use at the coronation of a king in Jerusalem. Perfect for today. Give the king your justice, O God, your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. Amen and amen. And then Psalm 119. Whoa, this could be its own book. It's so long. Um, my commentary says, impressive and imposing. Yeah. A literary monument raised in honor of God's revelation to Israel. 
And maybe that's what we should remember is this psalm especially is uh, all about how, what, how God has been revealed. And there's a lot to say. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places.